Hey, what's up guys? Sauce here. Just wanted to make a video for you guys today talking about Warlock Day 1 Raid loadouts or builds. These are some of the builds that I'm going to be taking into the raid and have been really, really helpful in the past with things like Day 1 Raids or Master Raids or GMs or anything like that where there's a contest modifier involved and you've got that level delta. Anytime that you're dealing with a high-end content, your number one key should be for survivability and trying not to make things too complicated. I've got a few builds here that I want to go over that are going to start off just really simple, have a lot of uptime and provide a lot of utility for you and your teammates. And then I've got one at the end that is a little different that I'll go over, but also may be really effective. So the first couple I want to talk about are going to be centered around Well of Radiance. Well of Radiance is a fantastic super support subclass for your team. It's really good if you need to clear tons of ads and get a res or if you're going into a damage phase to give your team protection. And the kit has some, some neutral game abilities here that I feel like are a bit underrated and I kind of wanted to go over those also. One of which is this Divine Protection. Uh, this can turn your grenade into a healing grenade if you overcharge it and throw it on the ground. It provides you and your teammates over shields. Um, when you do this, you also proc uh, Benevolent Dawn, which increases the regeneration rate of all of your abilities, which is really nice. So the first exotic I want to talk about on this build is paired with Stag. Stag is such a fantastic exotic. We can look here at what it does. Your Rift provides damage reduction to allied guardians standing in it. Grants Rift energy when you are critically wounded. On your death, it creates a healing rift on your corpse. I can't explain how good this is where you have like a contest modifier in that level delta like we will with the day one raid. The damage reduction it gives you is 25% and the rift energy regeneration that you get when you're critically wounded, it's a good chunk. And in a day one raid, your shields are constantly going to be breaking. So you'll kind of always have a rift up, which is such a nice tool for you and for your teammates to give them that 25% damage reduction. And then if you do have to go down creating that healing rift there on your orb for your teammates to use when they're getting your res this is a really really simple build it doesn't require a lot of thinking it's not something that you've got to be really careful with when and how you use certain things really really straightforward which is nice when you have anything with that level delta to not have to think about stuff you want to be able to just go in and play and have the things that you've equipped provide you the most benefit without having to work too hard to get that benefit. This is all about that. So starting off at the top, we've got the stag and I used stasis gloves for this grenade kickstart. These give you about 15% each. So double stack them, use that healing grenade. You chuck that and you've immediately got 30% of your grenade back. The chest piece here doesn't really matter the affinity of your chest piece, except for when we're talking about specific energy resistance. So it's really nice that Bungie's made this change to being able to change the affinity of masterworked armor pieces. So now it would cost a lot less to do this. I think you can do it for one upgrade module, some glimmer. So the energy of your chest piece only matters if you're talking about stuff like arc resistance, void resistance resistance or anything like that but if you want to just keep it really simple concussive dampener is fantastic and then if you've got some guys off in the distance some vandals or something that are sniping like crazy uh, you can throw on a sniper damage resist so boots always have to be solar when you're doing stuff like this is for this reason right here recuperation always 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 want to use recuperation and it's just such a good tool people could argue a case for using something like a scavenger or something like that and if ammo economy really becomes a problem in your encounter then you know i'd say after you've kind of learned the encounter a little bit then maybe you could switch over to that but i would encourage you going in first using a recuperation or even a double recuperation and getting that benefit of health replenishment every time you pick up an orb of power we don't know the changes that are going to be coming with orb generation but as it stands right now orbs are everywhere all the time and and this is a really great tool to add to that survivability. Like I said, I would favor 
going this route first and then if you get into the encounter you learn the encounter and how to survive without um, so much of this then you could switch over to the scavenger mod then on my class item i'm using double bomber for added grenade regeneration again having that healing grenade and that overshield be able to, to proc is just so good and like i said really underrated these give you about 15 percent each so every time you throw a rift down which you should have your rift up all the time using stag with that rift energy regeneration from being critically wounded you throw a rift down then with two of these on you've immediately got 30 percent of your grenade back then going back to the stasis gloves 15% each for these, that's another 30%. So going over the stats here, always want to have 100 recovery. Recovery is the best stat in the game. This means less time hiding and more time fighting. In something like a day one raid, you may have a quick second to duck behind cover, but things are going to be pushing against you. Ads are generally really aggressive. You don't have a lot of time to hide for that health regeneration to start. So having your recovery maxed out, and this is also fantastic for warlocks because this plays right into your rift regeneration. Resilience, I for stuff like this, I try and always hit 60 resilience. Pair this with a sniper resist or something like that. And a lot of things that'll one shot most people, you won't be one shot. You know, your shields will break and you'll have like 10 HP, but if you can throw a rift down and heal, then you're back in the game. So now I want to talk about the other layer of this build, and that's the charge with light stuff. This is all going to center around one thing protective light. Literally the most important mod in any of these builds that involve support and survivability is going to be protective light protective light gives you 50 percent damage resistance by consuming your charge with light stacks now the length of this benefit depends on how many charge with light stacks you have so we'll get to that in a second but this is so good and has saved my life so many times all the guys that i run with we all use this all the time and it's just literally saved our bots so much so the way we're going to get charged is just by using taking charge as of right now, or picking up orbs of power, the best way to get charged with light. We'll see what happens with the changes to that coming. I'm going to add an extra thing here. I just got a little bit of energy on my gloves here to spend and go with the shield breaking charge. And just, you know, anytime I break an enemy shield that matches the energy type, I'll get an extra chargeable light stack. And then I'm going to pair this with supercharged. Supercharged in itself gives you two additional stacks. So without it, you can get two stacks. And then having this on gives you two more for a total of four but then if you pair that with charged up now that's your fifth stack so this gives you five total stacks of charged with light pair that with protective light now you've got a 50 percent damage resist timer that feels like it lasts forever i chose to have my helmet be a void helmet so that i could use dynamo you get super energy while using your class ability near ads you're probably always going to be near ads when you're running the day one raid we know that that with the way that stag works you're going to be using your rift all the time so dynamo is a fantastic mod to have on your helmet but you can always if you need to swap that out for another ammo finder i have a feeling rockets are going to be damaged meta so i'm putting a rocket launcher ammo finder on my helmet to help with that this is a really good all-around build that you don't have to think about too much you can put this on just play the game and you'll get a lot of benefit from your rifts your teammates will get a ton of benefit from the damage resistance from being in your rift and if you go down it puts that healing rift down on the ground for you and with the protective light you just add a ton of survivability there next i want to talk about luna factions and phoenix protocol both of these are really good they do different things and have more benefit one versus the other i'll talk about phoenix real quick phoenix is fantastic if you are trying to spam wells in grandmaster nightfalls we use this a lot because you know we are chaining supers back to back to back you know you've got two or three warlocks and you're just keeping a well down the whole time. This exotic allows you to regenerate super based on how many kills or assists that you get while you're in your well radiance. Recently, they changed this and capped that super regeneration at 50%, which is a real bummer. I mean, I get it. I uh, don't want the game to be too easy, I guess. If you end up coming up with a strat for a certain encounter in the raid where it literally is, you know, just waves and waves of ads, then this might be really nice if you and two 
two or three other warlocks just want to chain supers back to back. It's not really like a, a damage encounter because, you know, if you're doing a DPS encounter on a boss, Luna Factions, this would be a really good one to use. Both of these, I would say, just like I was talking about before with the stag with the protective light, same applies here. Um, you want to use protective light, supercharge, taking charge, and all that for the added survivability. With Luna Factions, this is going to increase your, your weapon reload speed, which is going to be really nice for rocket launchers if that does in fact prove to be the DPS meta and then in empowering rifts it extends the weapons range so where this comes into play is say rocket launchers aren't dps meta for a certain encounter and it's fusions or slug shotguns having that added range if it's a difference of you know 10 meters versus 20 it's gonna be really good if you get too close to these bosses you know they have the stop mechanic having this on there so that you can be just outside that stop range but having the extended range reducing your damage drop off from your slug shotgun or your fusion rifle or whatever is going to boost everybody's damage and the added reload speed translates to more DPS. So both have a lot of utility, talking about Phoenix and Luna, just different uses. One thing I, th I think people kind of forget when they're going into something where there's this big level delta and you're getting your butt kicked and you're learning an encounter and whatnot. And they put a loadout and they're like, all right, this is going to be my loadout for the raid. And I'm not saying that's wrong. But I would say don't automatically assume that there isn't something that you could switch to that may prove to be more beneficial and might be the difference in your team clearing the raid. Uh, for example, I could see myself running stag going into new encounters until I learn that encounter. And then once I do and our team is able to consistently get to the damage phase for an encounter, I may swap to Lunas because I don't need that added survivability because I've learned the safe places to hide and where to do damage from. So I'll throw these on and this will give my team that added reload speed and increased weapon range. So that's Stag, Luna, and Phoenix Protocol. Next one I want to talk about doesn't really get a lot of attention right now, but can be very, very good. This is literally the healer build. And that is this Well Irradiance build with this exotic here, Boots of the Assembler. We can look at what this does. Standing in a healing rift creates noble seekers that seek out allies that are not in the rift and heal them. Standing in an empowering rift creates noble seekers that grant both you and your ally a damage bonus. Each time a noble seeker finds one of your allies, the duration of your rift is briefly extended while you are standing in it. So you throw your rift down and there's these little noble seekers that pop out of your rift and they go and find your teammates and they heal them. I think the range is somewhere like 15, 20 meters. You pair this with a high discipline where you can throw those healing grenades and you're literally a healer for your team. Some changes that I would make here. You want boots to be solar for recuperation. We had already talked about that. My bond, I would change to void. Of course, we're using protective light, but that is for double perpetuation. Perpetuation says reduces your class ability cooldown when using your class ability. So use your rift and it's going to reduce the cooldown of your next rift. So double stack this and it gives you a 30% reduction in your rift timer, which at 100 is, I think it's like 40 seconds. So 30% reduction in that with double perpetuation on and pairing that with dynamo on your helmet because you're always gonna be throwing your rift down to provide that healing benefit to your teammates. I think this could be really, really good in giving that healing support to you and your team. That's one of the reasons I was okay with my resilience being a little bit lower because I know that I have that constant healing benefit. If you've got two or three of these guys on your team, it could really just make surviving an encounter really easy. The next build I want to talk about, Devour Void Warlock with Controverse Holds. We know Void 3.0 is coming. We don't know what all that means yet. There's no way they're not going to have Devour be somewhere in the kit of Void 3.0 for Warlocks. This is like a staple of this subclass. When Devour is active, killing things regenerate your health. This here says it has to be a kill with your melee, but what you can do is instead use Feed the Void. 
consume your grenade to proc the devour effect. So let's talk about how that pairs up with Controverse Holds. Controverse Holds says resist incoming damage while charging your void grenade with Chaos Accelerant, Feed the Void, or Handheld Supernova. Well, we know with that subclass tree, we're using Feed the Void to proc devour. The next part of this, charge void grenades, return an amount of energy on hit. Well, you're not gonna hit anything with this grenade, but that damage resistance that you have while you're charging your grenade, it's like a 50% damage resistance. If you have stasis gloves with a double grenade kickstart, you consume your grenade and you immediately have 30% of your grenade back. While you have devour procced and you're getting kills, it recharges your grenade. You always have devour ready and available to constantly keep regening your health. This is so good for survivability and something that's not really used a whole lot or thought of. I can't speak enough to the survivability in hard content. If you pair this again with protective light, which gives you that damage resistance when you're critically wounded, then you've constantly got this health regeneration with devour. I can see myself definitely running this with my team if we have enough well warlocks. Nova Bomb's a great source of burst damage. You can go into a damage phase chuck a nova and then immediately start unloading your galahorn or your whisper sleeper or whatever it is that you're using for damage the nova bomb itself i think is like 150 200 damage but it takes half a second to use it whereas chaos reach might be more damage i think it's like three four hundred thousand but it takes you four or five seconds to use it so i am pairing this with a solar class item so that i can have double bomber and then we know we get 30 percent from having these two grenade kicks starts we know that getting kills while devour is active recharges your grenade energy you're always going to have your devour grenade up really effective for individual survivability the difference here with this build it doesn't provide your team as much of a benefit but if you've already got like i said enough well irradiance warlocks that you know are running stags or running assembler boots or whatever and providing that extra benefit to your team and you having the same build may just kind of be diminishing returns i would say this would be really good to add an extra layer of damage to your damage phase and then finally the last build i want to talk about here is probably one of my all-time favorite builds there's a little bit more involved with this than all of the other builds that i've mentioned so far but i cannot speak enough to the utility of this build this is a stasis turret buddy build that's what i call it we're going to be running the shade binder subclass here and we're going to be pairing that with glacial harvest and bleak watcher bleak watcher is the little stasis turret buddy that fires the stasis shards at all your ads for you and then glacial harvest is the aspect that gives you the stasis shards which will be really important i'll get to that in a second the fragments that we're going to pair this with uh, we're going to use whisper of durance which extends the duration of your stasis abilities this is important for extending the life of your turret a lot of people don't know that these two interact with each other but they do whisper of rhyme this one is so key collecting a stasis shard grants a small amount of overshield that overshield translates to about 10 percent of your overall health and falls off after about 10 seconds it's kind of underrated and can give you a lot of added survivability when you're running a build like this and maybe you don't have to put protective light on because you've got this whisper torment this gives you grenade energy each time you take damage from targets you're going to be taking a lot of damage you want your turrets up as frequently and as often as possible for as long as possible so this is just going to help make sure that happens because while you're in there on a day one raid you're going to be taking a lot of damage all the time then the next one is going to be whisper of conduction with this one you also get a little bit of the uh, passive stat buffs there with your resilience and intellect but this is fantastic with this build and i'll kind of put it all together for you here in a second but this allows those stasis shards that you create with glacial harvest to try to you. You create these stasis shards from using your Blake Watcher turret buddy, freezing stuff, and then the shards track to you and they give you an overshield when you absorb them. But what we're going to do here is put elemental shards on. 
So those shards that you're creating with your Bleak Watcher stasis turrets now count as elemental wells. And then we're going to put elemental charge on, which says every time you pick up an elemental well that matches your subclass type, it's going to give you two stacks of charge with light. Now, thinking about this with the possible changes to orb production and what effect that that's going to have on taking charge, now we don't even have to worry about orbs of light. We don't have to use use taking charge we're simply allowing uh, something that we're already using to be our source of getting charged with light so we're pairing all of this with I have another world exotic which increases the regeneration rate of all your abilities just a passive buff to the speed at which your grenade your rift and your melee energies regenerate then we're going to pair all of this with three stacks of firepower. Each one of these gives you about 15% of your grenade back. Then here's the kicker at the bottom. This mod's effect stacks with other copies of this mod. A lot of people don't know this about these solar charged with light mods. Things like firepower or argent ordnance, which is going to be maybe a really big one in terms of uh, increasing the damage of those rockets. Kindling the flame, heal thyself, or any of these solar charged with light mods, they stack to increase the effect of that mod. Now, I think I've found that firepower is probably the best one for this outside of you know, maybe Argent Ordnance. So we're going to put three of these on. Okay, I got our boots here, of course, which are solar, and my chest piece is solar. So now, anytime I chuck a grenade, I'm immediately going to have about half of my grenade back just from those three mods and then with this grenade kickstart on just one of these because obviously i don't have enough energy here for another one but just one will give me another 15 percent and maybe i need this slot for like some champion weapon stun or something from the artifact who knows so with all of that i throw a grenade and i've immediately got two-thirds of my grenade back with i have another world it increases the regeneration speed of the grenade and then, uh, of course, I've got the solar bond on again for double bomber. So if I throw a grenade, then cast a rift, I will have my grenade back right away. For whatever reason, Bungie did not make it to where the level delta has an effect on the ability for uh, stasis to freeze things. One burst from a turret can freeze a barrier champ. So you wouldn't even need to run like a barrier mod. You can freeze the champ and if you know you and two or three other teammates all work together you can melt the champ before it ever has a chance to even pop its barrier if you pair this with some weapons that have demolitionists on them you can see i've got my uh Eichelos smg my grenade launcher i've even got a really good uh rocket launcher that's got demolitionists on it you're gonna have your grenades up like every 20 seconds and just being able to spam the battlefield with these turrets is just going to be so good for crowd control and provide so much benefit to you and your team you can even pair this with some stasis weapons with the headstone perk if you want to to create more of the crystals that allow you to become charged with light more often a lot of really good use here for this kit one of my favorite builds for sure so i hope all this helps if you guys got any questions uh you know i'm always around feel free to hit me up message me or whatever good luck out there on your day one rate clears